Hi, it's Jerry with I Love RV Life. Today, you've been asking for it. I'm going to share all the cameras and the software editing tools that I use to create YouTube videos. Well, hi, it's Jerry, and I get so many questions that about what do you use to create YouTube videos? It's not a single answer for this. Uh, the channel is almost two years old now. This January, it'll be two years old. And um, it was done as an, as an experiment originally just to see if anyone was interested in the type of content that Joan and I wanted to create. And now we're over 8,000 subscribers and we're doing about a million minutes of of viewing uh, every month and the channel just continues to grow and grow and grow and we're excited about it. Uh, we love sharing with this community and uh, I want to give you some of the tips of what we use to create this channel, show you some of the cameras and those types of things that we've evolved into. <laughs> it's been a lot of stuff. And then I'll show you the software that I use for editing and I think you're going to really be interested in seeing that. Uh, it's, it's kind of a little different than what a lot of people use, but I think, so stay tuned, don't give up on me. Well, let me start off with this. Before we get into the technology and the cameras and all those types of things, what do you want to do with your YouTube channel? Uh, our you, a YouTube channel has an identity. It has um, a personality. Let me start with what Joan and I wanted to do with our channel versus what we didn't want to do. What we really wanted to be able to provide is something that was very casual, very conversational about where we travel, um, the sites that we see along the way, the types of campgrounds that we visit, and also the products that we have purchased and used that we liked and share with you. Uh, we made a very early, early decision that we wanted to be a positive channel. It's really simple. If we like a campground we stay at, you're going to see it. If we like one of the stops that we like to visit, uh, whether it's a museum or something that nature has to offer or a great hiking destination or maybe even a restaurant that we visit. <laughs> if we show that, then we liked it versus doing the negativity of saying we don't like this place. Not that we're trying to hide anything. There's enough negativity that's out there in, in the social media networks and on YouTube as well. And we just wanted to be able to provide a positive escape that showed the good things. Yeah, sometimes we've had a couple bumps in the road and we'll show those as well, but we're going to keep the drama out and we're not going to do that. The second thing that we decided that we were not doing, and this is not a slam, I really enjoy a lot of the people who show the daily life of RV living getting up in the morning, cooking breakfast, having fun with the family, and then mixing in the tours and the stops and those types of things. That just wasn't what we thought would be interesting to us to be able to create. So we decided very, very early on that we would just make our channel a little bit different. So our channel is what we call a run and gun. It's unscripted. We have uh, no script that we follow. If we start seeing something, we talk about it and we have a conversation with you and show you the things along the way or show you the products that we use. Very, very unscripted. And we keep our content, uh, we try to keep it under 30 minutes. Sometimes we're not successful in doing that, but sometimes it runs in the 15 to 20 to 30 minute range. And we think that that's enough entertainment and enough information to be able to share. So as you're creating your YouTube channel, what is the personality that you're going to carry forward? And I think once you have that, then you can determine the type of equipment that you want to buy and how much you want to spend in that equipment and what would be the best for you to be able to use in that environment. Being that Joan and I use this, what we call run and gun environment, it, um, it really limits the, the type of equipment that we're able to use because we like to keep basically a low profile. We don't want to go in with a, you know, a big gorilla, a big gorilla mount and a big giant camera on top of it and run around where everybody sees us running around. We'd like to kind of keep a low profile. I will share this. There have been those times that I did want the camera visible only because I knew the type of venue that we were at. The only way we were going to get a door open is if people saw us coming in and filming and getting ready to put something up on YouTube and then 
boom, you know, the doors are open and we could use that. So it's all kinds of different tricks that you'll learn as you create your YouTube channel. So that being said, once you determine what you're going to use, then you can determine this is the style that my channel is going to be. Enough said of that, enough said of that. When we first started two years ago, um, I wasn't quite sure how I wanted to be able to run the channel, so I experimented a little bit. The first thing that I used was a phone. Now, if, if recently uh, I was watching Jamie's um, van build videos, if you've been watching that, uh, Ignomatic Nomadic, I think is the name of his channel, everybody had some form of a camera running around, whether it was a phone or GoPros or, oh my goodness, everybody had a camera. Uh, we're not going to be in those environments filming. Uh, I would rather take you along a beautiful hike or I'd like to take you inside of a museum and not make it a traditional YouTube destination. Again, that's the type of channel that we offer. But when we first started, I used my phone. Um, and I, I must share with you the new, the new iPhones make incredible video. This is a Samsung. Um, this is a 8 Plus. They make the 9s now. Um, and there's not a whole lot of difference in the camera. I'm sure we can debate about that. This provides an awesome platform. The video is beautiful. If you're going to do something close and personal, and look, I still share with you, there are times that I use this, like um, if we were maybe at some type of a music venue. We were up in Nashville last year, or, uh, and... Uh, I used this several times as we were going up and down uh, Broadway. Uh, I used this phone uh, for doing that. It makes relatively good pictures. Uh, we get into something called field of view, uh, which uh, is fixed with something like this. And also when you zoom with it, you're doing an optical zoom. So it can get grainy if you've ever experimented with something like that. But if you just want to set this with the aperture, if you want to set it up to where it's um, just in its native state, and you want to take very still videos, usually I do something like this, and always doing in a horizontal mode, um, and I try not to move around too much. If you take a phone and you pan too quickly, it gets very pixelated, very grainy. So it, it's limited in what it's able to do, but what it does do, it does very, very well. So you can use your phone, uh, and you can put it on a gimbal if you choose to do something like that. And uh, you can make some really, really nice videos. Probably about the first three or four months that I had the channel before I started to want to make some investment, I used my phone and I was very, very happy with it. Uh, and then, like I said, there are times when I might be doing one of my projects. Um, I'll give you, for instance, when I did the uh, screen uh, here recently where we were doing the sunscreen, I needed to do some close-ups. And it was easier for me just to pull my phone out and just do a close-up of where I was doing some work and then let the big camera do its work from that standpoint. But again, uh, these work very, very well and there's nothing wrong with them other than understand their limitations. It's not good for zooming and it's not good for action. If you're just gonna stand and talk with some individual or if you're gonna stand there and do a selfie, let me do that. If you're gonna stand there and do a selfie, something like that, then um, these work relati relatively well for that. So this is where we first started. My next step up was to go out and purchase a camera. And I really wasn't sure what I wanted to be able to use at the time. Um, did I want to be able to use a DSLR? You know, exactly where I wanted to go. And I found this camera here. This is a Sony HDR CX455. First of all, I'm a big fan of Sony products. I like them a lot. Um, I just love this camera. This thing is just absolutely awesome. Um, you can, it fits well in your hand. You can hold it um, as like this um, and, and make beautiful video. This makes full 1080 uh, high resolution video and the video quality is just absolutely beautiful. What I like about this is the profile is so small and slim. You can literally drop it into your pocket, you know, if you've got some baggy shorts on in the summer or if you're wearing a pair of slacks and you're walking around, you can literally drop this thing in your pocket. Again, think about the style that Joan and I use. We use what I call this run and gun, uh, talk about that again, and I want a low profile. So I'm not walking in with a whole bunch of camera. Literally, you open this guy up and the face opens up on it. It's got a built-in microphone that does a great job. 
It's got optical zoom in it. There's some pros and cons behind that, um, but it does 42x optical zoom, and I mean that's a really reach out and touch someone. And you can you, you know you can hold it like this and create like you use yourself as a steady mount. Um, it has a little bit of stabilization that's built into it. You're not going to be able to run like you can with some, well, like the new GoPro that's out. You can't run with it, but you can walk gently with it, and it doesn't make a lot of up and down video. Um, the audio, it's got mics built into it. The audio quality on it is just absolutely superb, and the video is just absolutely beautiful. It's small. It's simple. Um, it does well in low light situations. I just love this. The second thing that I like about it as well, and I don't think you can see it here, is you can open up this little door that's located here, and uh, inside of it is, uh, you'll see a little, you might be able to see it in the video here, there's a little red jack there. You can put a lavalier mic, like I've got a lavalier mic on here, and you can put a lavalier mic on it so as you're walking around, you can have a, a, you know, a windscreen lavalier mic on, and be narrating your video and it does a great job doing that it just this does beautiful beautiful video the selfies are easy you know you can set it you can flip your screen around like so and you can do your selfie you know like that and you can talk into it and it just does a great job uh, it's got facial recognition so it will focus on your face as well now this is not an inexpensive camera this is not your 150 to 200 dollar camera uh, I'm finding these now on Amazon for around the 350 to 400 mark. It just depends on all the accessories that you get. If you do get this, make sure um, that you buy um, the extended battery. It comes with a little thin profile. I've got a very, very large battery. I didn't bring it uh, out to be able to show today, but it's, it's a little bit thicker. And that battery fully charged, well, I can shoot all day long with it. I can get up early in the morning. I can hike. We can do tours in the afternoon. And I can do activity that night around the campfire if I want to. You can shoot hours and hours and hours and hours with that large video. The, it, this is a great little camera. I cannot speak more about this. It just does a, a great job. What it doesn't do a good job doing is still photography. So I'll show you some other options that I use um, for still photography. And also you don't want to get this wet. Um, so if it's raining and things like that, or if you're in an action uh, situation, um, or you're, you know, you're wanting to hang it out the car window as you drive, this is not the device to be able to do that. It is a sensitive electronic, but for what it does do, it does a great job. And for about a $350 mark, to see the quality of video that comes out of this is just really spectacular. Uh, the next thing that I'll show you uh, that I use from time to time is my old tried and true GoPro. Everybody that does YouTube video, I think, has one or more of these. Um, it's almost a stock staple if you're going to do YouTube videos for a number of different reasons. Um, this is an older model. This is the Hero 4. Uh, silver. It doesn't have uh, the screen in the back. Um, uh, I use this for time lapse. It does a fantastic job with time lapse. Uh, I've got several of these cases. Uh, if you've not used a GoPro, uh, they come with various cases and adapters. But this is the, you know, this is the unit within itself. If you'll notice, this does not have the screen in the back of it. This is the silver. Uh, the black has the screen. Uh, I did that because the batteries last a little bit longer without the screen. And I know you can time those out and those types of things. But you can get these with cases that are skeleton. One of the things that I like the most about the 4, and one of the reasons I haven't upgraded to some of the other models, is the audio quality with the onboard mic on the old Hero 4s are amazing and I'm really a stickler about audio. I, I like really good audio in my videos. Um, here's the nice thing. You can still buy these things brand new and even some refurbs. You can go out to Amazon. Um, there's still a bunch of these out there and you can pick these things up for a hundred bucks. The old Hero 4 Silver. Um, something that's very, very popular is the Hero 5 Black. Uh, you can find those out there still in a lot of large quantities for about $250. There's also the Hero 7 Black that's very popular now. That's got 
optical stabilization in it. Wow, is that just, I've seen some videos on it. Some of the videos that are coming out of that, it's pretty amazing. It's pricey, it's 400 bucks um, with the kits and types of things that come with it, the cases and so forth. Uh, and it does some really beautiful video. And I'm also looking at a couple other things that I'm looking at possibly upgrading here in the future. One of the things you're gonna notice once you start getting into uh, YouTube videos, the purchases never end. Um, there's always that better tool to make your videos a little bit better, uh, and it gets quite contagious after a while. Now, here's another one. Oh, the other thing about this, let me share you this, is all the options. Like, this is a suction cup mount. Um, you can put this uh, on your windshield and mount this on your windshield so that you can drive down the road and look through the window. You see a lot of people that do that, or you can turn it around so you can talk to people as you drive down the window or drive down the road. Um, the other thing that I use this for, I did um, a video about the Hensley uh, Trailer Saver Hitch, the TS3, if you've seen that one. Uh, I'll put a link up here so you can see how that one was used. And I put this in the back window stuck it to the back to the outside with the case on it so that you could see the hitch move up and down and see how the airbags and the stabilizers worked in it. Just This does a great job. This thing, I think um, I picked it up off of Amazon. I'm going to put links in for all these things. I think I paid 10 or $12 for it. I've got two or three of these and I just love them. And you can turn them all kinds of different angles and you can loosen them up and move them up and down. These things are fabulous and, you know, they throw away if they break, so it's no big deal. There's also been instances where I didn't want to take a nice camera out into a specific environment, whether it was going to be rainy or muddy or nasty or, you know, I just didn't know where I might be. And I definitely didn't want to ruin something that was very good quality, but yet I wanted to have a relatively good picture. Um, and I bought several of these. These are called contours. I've already destroyed one and I mean wiped it out. I dropped it and I mean did I ever drop it and it busted into a zillion pieces. It, it, it wasn't pretty uh, and it was my fault. It wasn't a fault of the camera. Um, this, this thing you can buy off Amazon I think for 39 bucks. It does high definition video. It comes with all the cases. It's Chinese made. It is not it is not a GoPro. Uh, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles of a GoPro, but it makes good video. The, the downside to it is the batteries are about half the size of a GoPro. So you're, you're, you, know, you need to carry a pocket full of batteries if you're gonna be filming with this for any period of time. But I use it for um, what I'll call short content, five, six, seven, eight minutes. Um, and uh, it does have a screen on the back of it and it does a good job, 40 bucks, you know, so, you know, if you're going to have something that you know you're going to be in a nasty environment or something that might get wet, this is a waterproof case. It is waterproof um, and it allows me to do relatively good video um, for those instances where I know that I'm going to be in a kind of a crummy environment. So um, this, is a, this is a great little option. The next camera I'd like to share with you is the Canon EOS T6i. Um, these are also referred to as a Rebel camera. Um, I like this camera for a number of reasons. One, I'd love to be able to use one of the more expensive cameras like a, a 5D. That's a several thousand dollar camera before I even get into the lenses and the glass. But I've got to be very upfront. There would be locations and places that I would be so uncomfortable carrying it that I would probably limit myself on some of the things I would do, especially when I do rough hikes. Um, this kit here, I've got to go back and look at my notes and see what I paid for it. Uh, you can get this with a couple kit lenses for about $700. That includes battery. Um, sometimes you can find these kits that include a carrying case and various other things, but about $700. And it will include um, usually two lenses, and I'll talk about those a little bit more as, as we go forward. But I just absolutely love this camera. It originally came uh, with this lens, which is an 18 by 55. Um, this is a good all around lens as you're looking for doing things like nature photography, or if you wanna have a wide variety of situations from being able to take your camera, you know, and doing a selfie um, and doing your narration. It, 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 it does put you up a little bit close. You can't get your arm quite far enough away. Um, but it does have some zoom. So where does that work well? Uh, you're out doing a hike. You want to be able to zoom in on a waterfall or, you know, something off. And you see some wildlife. There's a bear out there in the distance and you want to be able to show, you know, the bear or the deer or whatever that you're looking at. Um, this, um, 
this 18 by 55 mill millimeter lens offers a, a great amount of options. Again, this is this is optical zoom versus what we were talking about um, with the camera that does digital zoom. This is done with glass, so you don't get the pixelization. You keep the brightness of the picture, uh, and your picture looks continually great. Uh, your video looks good. Um, and, and I just really, really like this as a general purpose lens. Typically when I'm hiking, um, or if we're going to something like a sporting event or a museum or something like that, this is the lens I use because, you know, even if you're at a distance and you want to get a, or like we went to the Grand Ole Opry and I want to be able to get pictures of, um, of the performers, you know, I can take this and zoom in without a flash and, uh, and, and get a pretty good close up depending on where we're sitting. But the new lens that I've bought is this uh, 10 by 18. I've probably had this. Uh, since the first of the summer. That's been about five or six months. And I've just finally got to the point that I'm comfortable with it. It is a wide angle zoom lens. It does not have much of a zoom, but wow, does this make great pictures. So if I'm doing a project um, or if I'm just out, uh, again, if I'm going to something like a museum or something, that I know I'm not going to have to make a lot of distant shots. It does have a little bit of a zoom to it, but not much. But the wide angle view that this offers gives you very, very good um, views of whatever you're looking at and almost gives you the same view as you as a human, you know, with your peripheral vision um, of what you're able to see. This does something very, very similar. The other thing that I like about this is even though it's a wide angle lens, it doesn't do something called fisheye. And if you look at some of the um, wide angle lenses, you'll get a, maybe a blurred edge around from whenever you zoom in or out. And this, this does not do that. It does beautiful video. Um, it also has some stabilization in it. So um, if you've got just the slightest amount of movement when you're taking pictures, uh, this does a good job. Where these cameras do not do a good job in video is if you've got a lot of movement. And I know you'll see that sometimes in my videos where I do not put this on a, on any type of um, a gimbal. Um, and uh, you have to be very, very careful how you, how you frame your shots. You have to be very careful how you walk. You almost have to walk with your knees bent and walk very, very slow. <laughs> and people will watch you do it and stare at you walking more than they will uh, doing your, your video. Um, but this does a great job. I really love this camera. Um, it does full HD video, um, uh, 1080, the, and, and then it does high resolution pictures, both in JPEG and RAW. If you're into that type of thing and you're wanting to look at the specs on it, I shoot everything in JPEG. That's all I need for the web design that I do. And the other thing too is notice some of the pictures that we've been putting up, especially for the last several months. Uh, we added a new gallery page to the ilovervlife.com page and you can go out there and blow the pictures up and uh, we show them kind of like in a medium resolution just for the web experience but it does a great job taking pictures i just absolutely love this there's a couple of things that you can do um, to make using this a little bit better uh, and let me show you a, let me show you a couple of the things that i have this is a very inexpensive tripod you've seen the gorilla pods um, and a lot of the YouTube videos that people use, I think Casey Nyset uses those. Um, there, you'll see several other of the RV YouTube folks travel use them. Um, and, and they're a little bit longer and they've got the big round knobs. Um, this one is by eTropics, I believe is the way you pronounce that. Again, I'll put the, I'll put the link in. Um, this, this was cheap. You know, I thought, hey, if I use it for six months and it breaks, uh, I'm not out of anything. I've been using this thing for almost two years now, and I use it constantly. What I like about it is you've got a number of different mounts that you can put on it. It's got a mount that you can put a GoPro on. It's got a and it comes with this for 15 bucks. It's got a mount that you can put a phone in. I like it that it has a little slip-in mount that I can just snap this into my into my uh, camera here, and I can carry it and do my pictures. It gives a little bit of a stable platform as I'm looking around. And also it really helps, I kind of squat down a little bit. You know, as you're trying to give that, what I call an eyebrow view, instead of something like this, give an eyebrow view uh, for you to be able to talk into. Um, 
and uh, make, it makes a nice, uh, a nice platform to be able to do that. The other thing too is let's say you want to sit at the table you know, and talk to the camera. You can set the tripod out. Or if you want to stage something, I don't do a lot of staging uh, like a lot of folks do. No problem with it. I just don't do it. Um, you know, like if you're walking down a path, you can, you know, set the tripod out, you know, and set it down on a path and walk by it. And, you know, it kind of makes it kind of interesting to look at, it, you know, look at stuff like that. Once you have it on, it's very easy to remove. There's a little button that you can see here. You push that little button and it just snaps right off. You just really love it. The other thing that you'll probably notice on this when you see this thing dangling here, uh, what I don't have is the strap that goes around. I have one. I have two or three of them actually. But what I found is you have those straps and you're just, the camera is just beating into your stomach. Um, I use this. Um, this is just a little wrist strap. It's more of a safety belt than anything. So if I was to drop the camera, you know, I, I've got a little bit of a safety net here that I don't have to worry about losing my camera and uh, damaging it because you know, there's not a whole, these things aren't, you know, made of indestructible. Um, and the other thing too, is if you need to take it off or do something, you can leave the strap on and just snap the strap back on. Um, again, uh, this thing, I think this strap was maybe, um, uh, 15, $16, great insurance to have a bit of a safety belt for your camera as well. I just absolutely love this camera. One of the challenges of being able to use a, a camera like this is how do you get good audio out of it? It does have a, a two microphones on, on the front of this thing. And, and really the, the audio quality of just, you know, shooting it just like this, or even talking behind it. You know, normally when I'm shooting uh, something like this, I'll take my screen, you'll see, and it'll, it'll turn around, you know, when I'm doing my selfie, and then I'll flip it backwards, as you'll see here, you know, as I'm shooting my video. And a lot of times I take my elbows and I plant them in tight to my side. And I'll use this almost as a tripod, you know, so that I'll have good stable video as I'm shooting and as I'm kind of moving around and shooting it. And I can see my video here on the back side. And the audio from, this, from, the, from the two mics up here pick up very, very well. But then you get into that instance to where it's windy and it's noisy. And let me show you uh, what I use to be able to, uh, to remedy that. And I just absolutely love this mic. Th this, this microphone here is the non-powered version. This is your Rode uh, Video Go mic. I've had this as long as I've had the camera. Um, I do, some people refer to this as the dead cat. Um, it, it, it just slips right onto the front of the mic. Uh, it actually, when you order this mic, it comes with kind of a foam covering, but it is absolutely useless in, in getting rid of uh, sound noise. But when you put this in, um, it really does, if you're in moderate wind, um, it really will get that sound dead. Uh, if you're in really high winds, 30, 40 miles an hour, you're fighting it. You're fighting the camera. You're fighting standing there. I don't care what you do. You're still going to get some wind noise. And if I'm in that environment, I just end up apologizing. What I like about this, this requires no batteries. Um, and you can put it onto the front, you know, so when you're narrating uh, and it, you, you open up the little side door here. I don't know if you can see that. And, and it plugs into the side here. And it, it is a great mic. I cannot speak highly enough about this. Um, depending on how you get it configured with, uh, with the wind eliminator that goes on it, um, it, you can buy these as a kit for about 40 bucks. If you're going to get into YouTube video and you're going to be using a DSLR, make sure your DSLR handles um, a, an audio jack and buy this mic or one similar to it. The other thing too is you'll notice I'll flip it around like so and slip it on backwards. So you know as I'm walking around and doing my narration now I'll take my I'll take my lens to where I can see it you know and then just literally record like that. And it does a great job. I just love this camera and for you know seven hundred dollars and, and a couple lenses um, even the stock lenses that come with, you just can't beat this camera for vlogging. It's, it's, and, and the video on it is just absolutely incredible. I just absolutely love this thing. It's just really great. Well, uh, enough of cameras. Um, well, let's talk a, a second about some of the accessories that you can need. It really depends on 
what you're going to do and what you're going to grow into or where you want to step your game up. Let's say that you're already doing videos and you really want to step up your game. Um, there, there's two areas that you can improve your videos. One, good glass, good camera. Uh, second is going to be audio. One of the things that you'll hear most and a lot of vloggers that are out there is very, very poor audio. Either it's just overly windy all the time or the clarity just isn't there. And one of the things that I use um, is Sony body packs. Uh, these are not inexpensive. Uh, be very, very careful when you go out and look for these devices. Uh, you'll find a bunch of them out on eBay and you'll go, oh my goodness, what a great buy. But uh, recently, to be able to handle some of the um, new cellular frequencies that are going to be coming out here very, very soon, um, uh, some of those frequencies were sold. And you'll still find people that's dumping these body packs out there. And if you get caught using those, first of all, you're going to get interference all over the place. And second, if you get caught using those, you're going to get in trouble. So make sure you use something that's modern and current. Um, and also make sure you buy something that's multi-frequency. Um, this one, I think, has something like 600 channels. So if you were to go somewhere and be able to pick up some interference or something like that, especially if you're doing something like a sporting venue or you're walking through a museum that might have those, um, those earplugs where everybody's using to be able to hear some type of narration, you can run into some problems. And with the 600 channels that these guys have, um, you just, uh, you can dial around it. You just push a button until you get a clear channel. It's literally that simple. I love these, uh, these packs by Sony. I will share this with you. I use this. Uh, let me stop just a second. Some of these things you're, you're saying, Jerry, how in the world can you afford this? Um, I have a, a professional internet marketing business called Macon Web Designs. You'll see it at MaconWebDesigns.com. This is not a commercial for that company, but I do... Um, a lot of internet video for clients. I do web design, I do email marketing, that type of stuff. And then I have I Love RV Life that I do for fun. That's kind of like my escape that I enjoy. So I'm able to use some of the things, and I'm not even showing you all the equipment that I use in that business. I'm just showing you what I use really for I Love RV Life and this run and gun. But there are times that I want to be able to um, be more mobile and be able to have good audio. Uh, if you saw the eight part series that I did when I rebuilt the island, I used a body pack so that you could hear my narration very, very clear and you wouldn't be picking up all the ambient noise inside the RV during that period of time. Now I will share with you, these are expensive. Uh, they can cost as much as your camera, anywhere from the $500 range and up. Um, there's a, I'll, I'll leave you a link of one of these that I'm using right now that's in about the five to $600 range if you wanna be able to do something like that. Where does this work? So I'll just kind of show you here. Um, if I was to be using this camera here, um, this, this device literally slides on top here. and you neck it down. And I take my antennas and flip them up in the air. And then this cord right here plugs into the side. It takes AA batteries. I just throw me a couple Duracells in it. And you flip the switch. And then as you'll see here, I've got a body pack that's on. And here's my wireless body pack. And I'll just thread it up through my shirt or if you're going to be doing this for somebody else and you want to do an interview, these things are fantastic for something like that. And then you're off and going. Sometimes I will hike and I'll have this set up. And boy, do you get some stares when they see you walking around with this thing with the two antennas up on top of it. Um, it's kind of interesting. But the, vi the audio quality is just absolutely spectacular. Um, I just love being able to use this thing. I don't use it that often. I use it more for in these instructional videos that I'm doing today than I do when I'm out in the field. But um, this is a great little addition uh, to be able to add that real high-end professional side to your videos. It does a great job. Not mandatory. Look, if all you can afford is this, you know, this, um, you know, $40 Rode mic, 
you're going to get awesome, awesome audio out of it. So, uh, you know, don't, don't go, oh my goodness, I can't improve my audio because I've got to spend five or $600, 40 bucks, 40 bucks, and you can do awesome audio. Just really depends on what your application is and how you're going to be able to use it. Okay. So just a couple other things. Um, we recently brought a drone. Oh my goodness. Um, I, I don't know about you. I love drone video. And one of my resolutions that's going to be for 2019 is to do more drone video. We really didn't do that much this year. Um, there's a couple reasons why uh, we went to a bunch of places that they wouldn't allow us to fly drones. Ugh, I hate that. Um, and then uh, I just made some changes in my kit and I'll show you that it makes it a little easier for me to take the drone out with us out into the field. That's going to make things that's a lot different. I just love this new drone that we bought. This, uh, you'll see the carrying case here. Um, we bought a DJI Spark. Why did we buy the Spark? Well, part of it was budget reasons. Um, these things run about, mm, you can find them on sale for about $379. Here's the little Spark. I bought a kit. Um, it was a DJI kit. It came with a case. Um, it came with a controller. Um, it came with two batteries. It came with a charger. Um, extra propellers. I still haven't damaged these. Knock on wood <laughs> that I haven't done that. The video with this is just absolutely amazing. I, we did a video um, at Ocean Grove RV Resort down in St. Augustine, Florida. Oh, beautiful. And it also does great still pictures. Uh, we were up at a campground in North Georgia. And uh, I think that's a recent video that we did back in October where we did a flyover of the campground. I'm going to try to do more campground flyovers. Um, uh, we were up in Pigeon Forge and uh, they allowed me to fly the drone up there. That's one of the things that you always got to ask, or I strongly suggest you ask, before you fly your drone, always ask for permission. But wow, does this do beautiful, beautiful video. Um, and I just like it for the, for the price. You can just buy this and do your hand signals. I'm not into it. I've tried it. I didn't like, the envi I didn't like that user interface, $399, $379. But for a kit for 500 bucks, this is absolutely incredible. And, and I just love uh, this DJI product line. They do a great job with creating these drones. And, um, you know, they make them from, you know, a kit of $500 up into several thousand when you get up into the Mavic Pros and the Mavic Pro 2s and those types of things. But um, nice hard carrying case, 500 bucks. You can't beat it. Just absolutely love it. Uh, the next accessory that I bought this year, which has been really a game changer, and this is what's really helping me do a lot of video out here. This is a, this is a backpack by Altura. And I, golly, I like this. I, I love this thing. This allows me to do a number of things that I wasn't able to do before. First of all, you'll notice a very small profile and um, I never know what to take sometimes. So uh, I was talking about different lenses. I don't know what type of environment I'm going to be in. This provides a very safe area. If you'll notice here for me to be able to put my camera, the body of the camera fits in perfect. I've got a place that I can put an extra lens. And the other thing that you can see right up here in the top, I've got a place that I can put my drone. So I can take this little pack, this small little lightweight pack, and throw this thing over my shoulder. Um, it's it's lightweight. It's it's a it's a you know it's a, a, a cross strap. Um, I can go up here into the top, and you know I can put extra batteries and. You'll see that extra batteries, lenses, you know, those types of things that, that I use here in the top. And, and the overall package, if you'll notice here, is very, very small. And I just absolutely love this package. I can't believe I only paid 40 bucks for it. Um, what a great accessory. And I have used, you, you can't imagine the big old bulky bags that I was carrying around before. And now I can just use this simple little thing. It's heavily padded. 
I just absolutely love it. Uh, it's by Altura and it's just absolutely fantastic. And lastly, I'm going to show you the software I use. I'm not going to give you a tutorial on this, but I do want to show you how quickly you can uh, actually edit uh, a piece of a YouTube video. Uh, and, and I just absolutely love it. I also have the full Adobe Premiere Suite uh, with Illustrator, Photoshop, uh, After Effects, uh, Premiere, on and on and on. Um, and I do use it from the time to time not the video as much as I do the uh, graphic interfaces, but I really like uh, Vegas Pro. I've been using it since 2006. I think I'm up to version 12 now. Uh, version 16 is out. It's absolutely a fantastic piece of software, and I can do everything and then some that I need for all the tricks and just general editing I need for YouTube video. So um, here is some video assets uh, when I hiked Stone Mountain. I'll just show you how quickly you can assemble something here. I'm just going to drag them down. Uh, it's easy to be able to take this and shorten the clip. And then let's say that I wanted to stop here. I can uh, cut and remove and drag another clip in just this quickly. You can see how fast you can put something in. You can do a little fade transition here um, from one to the other. So you can actually preview. If you look here at the screen, you can you can see that fade from one to the other. See how nice that is. And let's say I wanted to stop here and I didn't need this. And uh, I'm going to pick it up at this location here. You can see how things are done. I don't know why I'm using that clip. But you can see how others can be added in. You can shorten it. Um, and this is not what they call a non-destructive edit. And you can see here as I continue my little preview as I go back and forth. See how easy it is to be able to work. It's absolutely fantastic. Just love this software. Then once you finish, you highlight what you want. Uh, you come up to File. Uh, render as, and then you have presets. So here is a, a 10, uh, a 1920 by 1080, or this is what you refer to as an internet 1080i. It's already a preset. If you wanted to do a 720, you can do that, and you render it, and off you go, and you're done. And it only takes seconds to be able to do your edits. I just absolutely love this piece of software. Um, again. You, there's so many features here that I could go into, but you see the preview windows here, and it's just really, really a great piece of software. So it's Sony Vegas Pro is what I use for my video editing, and I just absolutely love it. Wow, I know this was a long video, and we covered so much from how to use cell phones and YouTube to you know moderately priced, consumer-grade uh, camcorder equipment that does a great job to action cameras, both your uh, more expensive um, GoPros to the uber cheap Chinese that you can destroy and not you know, have too much heartburn over that. And then I actually showed the uh, nice DSLR that we use, a moderately priced DSLR with moderately priced uh, lenses that we use to be able to create our videos as well. So I hope you found that uh, fun and I hope you found that enjoyable. You know, I just love creating these videos. I love doing the pictures. I love sharing, you know, our travels and our trips with our family and our YouTube viewers as well. If you haven't subscribed, would you take a minute and just subscribe so you can see other types of things that we're doing at I Love RV Life? And uh, if you'll just give us a thumbs up. Uh, we'd appreciate that as well. And I'd like to have your comments. Um, if, if I didn't cover something clearly here, you need some additional explanation, it would be my absolute pleasure to be able to share you know, how we use all this video equipment and audio gear to be able to make YouTube videos. It'd be my pleasure to share. Or if you've got something that you like using um, and you'd like for us to be able to consider using that as well, look, we can just we can use it to make the channel better and I'd love to be able to consider it as well. Well, I love doing this and why do I love doing it? You got it. It's because I love RV life. <laughs>